Nothing has the potential of changing people's lives more than aviation. It changed entire cultures because suddenly the boundaries that we had were no longer the boundaries. Aviation comes with some risk and if you are going to be a part of the aviation industry you must understand that risk and you must mitigate that risk as much as possible otherwise your industry is not going to grow. Safety has to begin with an industry that is dedicated to safety and the FAA's job is to oversight their compliance with safety. If you can find the system, find the threads, and then foster collaboration on safety in particular, I think that's where the breakthroughs are going to come. We're committed to it, and when FAA and the industry are committed to things, we have accomplished tremendous results. The Federal Aviation Administration has been faced with challenges and goals since Congress created it back in 1958. The act, which was passed by Congress and signed into law in the wake of a tragic mid-air collision over the Grand Canyon, replaced the old Civil Aeronautics Administration with a modern agency. The Federal Aviation Act that was signed into law that year required all U.S. airlines and U.S. airplane operators to maintain the highest practical level of safety in the public interest. The new FAA was directed to establish and maintain a comprehensive set of up-to-date aviation regulations. It was also given sole responsibility for the nation's system of air navigation and air traffic control. But one of the agency's biggest roles has been that of promoting and enforcing aviation safety. It's there that the FAA has truly made its mark. Aviation accident rates have declined year after year. As a matter of fact, in 1998, not one single U.S. airline had a serious accident nor was anyone killed while traveling aboard a scheduled U.S. air carrier. That remarkable statistic remains the exception, however. And, although air travel is far and away the safest form of transportation on Earth, airline accidents still occur. When they do, they grab headlines everywhere. In its quest to keep today's U.S. air transportation industry the safest in the world, the FAA relies on the Flight Standard Service, its frontline force, to interact with air crews, ground crews, and operators. Hello there. You guys are flying 1641? We are. Captain Hawk. Jim Gardner, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, Scott Taylor. Hey, Scott, nice how are you? Jim. I'll show you my 110A. I was hoping to do a cockpit. Flight Standards yeah, consists of a cadre of more than 3,000 dedicated professionals, including inspectors like Jim Gardner. They stage out of more than a hundred district offices across the country and overseas and deal directly with airway users. Today, Gardner will accompany an air crew on a flight from Washington to Denver to measure its level of professionalism. How you doing, sir? Bill Bergman with the FAA. Flight Standards Inspector Bill Bergman, who's also a flight engineer in the Air Force Reserve, concentrates on the complex issues of aviation maintenance. Bergman inspects aircraft of all shapes and sizes, from big jets to helicopters, to help make sure they are safe to operate. Inspector Mona Tyndall, whose specialty is aircraft radios and avionics, may also be called upon to spot check aircraft operators, like Ron Gatewood. Tyndall's job on this particular day is to make sure that Gatewood's airworthiness inspections, licenses, and certificates are all up to date. All inspectors share in this responsibility. Flight Standard Service also provides an ongoing series of aviation safety programs throughout the U.S., including regular seminars to help encourage safety and proficiency. Instrument conditions is the leading cause of general aviation accidents. The FAA knows that those who regularly attend these seminars have better than average safety records and awards those who achieve safety-related goals. The work of the men and women of the Flight Standard Service is both challenging and diverse. Flight Standards inspectors are typically seasoned professionals with years of experience in aviation. After all, this frontline team must interact day in and day out with those in the aviation industry. They also represent the nearly 50,000 employees who make up the FAA. In the very early days of airline operations, on-time arrivals like this one were few and far arriving between. from New York and the East, arriving 420 on time. There was very little regulation and no flight standard service. 
When this tri-motor Ford was the airliner of choice, flying was barely 30 years old, and passengers brave enough to go by plane were happy to arrive on the day they were supposed to, let alone the hour. In the years after World War II, when both the airlines and private flying were really coming into their own, the skies overhead were still not as regulated nor as safe as they are today. If you look over the last 10 years, there's a lot of programs that have come on in, in AVR and in flight standards specifically that uh, have been directed toward actually reducing the number of lives that are lost in, in aviation accidents. Um, the, the, the training programs, the air carrier training programs to get, to get the pilots to talk to each other, to get the pilots to, to have, have better communication in the cockpit. Um, those are very important. We, we are already seeing benefits of those. Um, technology, of course, has, has moved in, in, in massive amounts into aviation, clear down to general aviation. So uh, th there have been a lot of improvements, but I think I measure the success of, of what we do by what happens to the accident rate. McSweeney says that although the accident rate has been going down, the increasing popularity of jet travel is putting greater demands on the FAA to root out all the causes for airplane mishaps and eliminate as many as humanly possible. We still have to make a great big improvement because, especially in air carrier operations, they're moving up so fast that, that if we don't reduce the accident rate over the next 10 years, very dramatically, and we say five-fold reduction, that the accident rate or the number of accidents per whatever time frame you want to have are actually going to rise. And we believe that that's just an unacceptable thing. So taking the data, you identify your highest risk categories. And then you do an analysis of probable um, causes of all of those accidents. And you drill down and you keep asking questions, why, 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 why? And you get to what we call root causes. The job now is to sift through the arriving data to search for ways to fine-tune safety. Now the hard work begins. The analysis, understanding what, what happens in an accident scenario, looking at similar accidents to see what's happening across the board that's similar. Why are pilots doing what they're doing? Why does the aircraft do what it does? What happened at the airport environment? So that we can determine where we put our efforts to make corrections. Is it pilot training? Is it a change to the aircraft? Is it air traffic control procedures that might need to be changed so that we can change the environment so that that set of circumstances don't, don't occur again? Um, that's the hard part. Gilligan says the search for root causes is vital and very dependent upon data collection by flight standards. It takes longer than any of us would like but we're trying to give it the right time, the right amount of time, so that we're sure we get the right output at the end. Pat Andrews is a fellow recipient of the coveted Presidential Citation from the Flight Safety Foundation. Andrews manages a worldwide corporate jet operation and is responsible for a large fleet of executive aircraft and hundreds of personnel spread across the globe. Andrews accumulated thousands of hours as a corporate pilot before assuming her role in management. The challenges are huge, there's no question, but the, the FAA, I think, is beginning to understand the importance of trust. Taking a position of being, um, a, seeing the operators in the system as customers is, uh, is an important first step. It's not unlike a, someone in my job, a manager, saying, my employees are my customers, and they really are, because at the end of the day, what I want them to do is I want them to come in, bring all their energy there, and then make good decisions about the work that they do every day. Good decisions in aviation are vital, especially at 30,000 feet. One of Jim Gardner's duties as a flight standards inspector is observing pilots in the safety of a high-tech flight simulator as he puts them through the rigors of realistic in-flight emergencies. It's all part of risk management, of keeping the ball in your court. You got to look at the the whole system in the cockpit. You have to look at the decision making of the pilot. You have to look at how data was presented to the pilot to tell that pilot to do something. You have to look at the training. You have to look at 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 all kinds of things that could have impacted that decision. 
aviation in general. That's the FAA. And it's the men and women of the Flight Standard Service who interact with everyone who builds, instructs, flies, and operates the diverse American fleet. It all goes back to that Federal Aviation Act that was signed into law in 1958. First of all, it says that the air carriers, and, and you, you can lump the manufacturers in that, are required to operate to the highest practical level of safety in the public interest. That's an important statement. That also talks about the FAA's role. It says the FAA's role is one of promoting aviation safety. But it really places the burden of aviation safety on the industry. I really do believe that safety is primarily driven by the quality of the decision making of the participants in the industry. And I don't care what they're doing, whether they're maintaining aircraft, whether they're flying aircraft, directing aircraft, or making regulations. If they have good decision making processes in place, by and large, we're going to get to a much better place.